Mississippi for being with us today. And a huge thank you for what you are doing to help uh, slow the spread of this virus. We know that we are in uh, a fight the likes of which we have not seen in many, many, many years in this country. This fight is serious, this virus is serious, and this virus is deadly. We are also continuing to reopen our economy because the threat of newfound poverty and quite frankly abject poverty is serious and could be deadly for hundreds of thousands of Mississippians as well. Our Safer at Home order does not expire until May 25th, but I don't want to wait if there are things that we can safely do to allow people to return to work. To that end, I signed a new executive order today. It amends our current Safer at Home order. It allows tattoo parlors to reopen with health guidelines that are very similar to those for salons and barbers. It is an effort to affirm that there is no such thing as a non-essential business to those workers who rely on its paycheck for food and shelter. It also makes a few common sense changes to the order. Things like allowing local entities to decide curfews on parks, lifting curfews on dine-in restaurants that do not serve alcohol, and ending the prohibition on fishing tournaments. I want to also update the people of this great state on another reopening. We have been working with the Gaming Commission and they have set a date and guidelines for casino workers to safely return to work. They will be able, should they choose, to open on May 21st. It will not be at full capacity and there will be social distancing rules in place. But it is progress, progress for an industry that employs tens of thousands of Mississippians. None of these reopening efforts mean that the danger is gone. You're smart, you know that, you've heard us talk about it day after day, day after day. Please continue to protect yourself and please continue to protect your loved ones. It is an effort to fulfill our promise to the people of Mississippi. I asked you, in fact, I pleaded with you to help us to sacrifice for a specific goal, to slow the spread so that our healthcare system will not be overwhelmed. I do not understand those people who say we cannot reopen until there is a cure or until the threat is gone. That is not what the people of this country, nor is that what the people of this state agreed to. The only authority that the government has comes from the consent of the governed. It comes from the consent of the people. We have to honor our commitments. Moving the goalpost in the middle of the game is counterproductive and just plain wrong. Personal responsibility is better than any government order. Guidelines are better than lockdowns. Trust with risk is better than unchecked government power. As we work to keep reopening, that's what we're all counting on. Please play your part. Please be responsible. Please look out for your family. Look out for your friends. Look out for your neighbors. Please look out for your fellow Mississippians. Together, we will get through this. At this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Dobbs and let him talk about the most recent data. Thank you very much, Governor. Um, updated case reports for today, we're reporting 318 uh, new cases today to bring us to a total of 10,081, I mean 10,801. We have uh, sadly reporting 13 additional deaths. Um, two of those were identified from prior uh, death certificates, bringing our total death count up to 493. If we look at who's been primarily impacted in terms of mortality, um, we know that there are several things um, at play. Um, primarily, it's gonna be older individuals and the vast majority of people who have died thus far have been over 60 years of age, but we do have deaths in a younger age group, including one between 18 and 29 years of age. If we look at what location is most at risk, clearly it's gonna be long-term care facilities or nursing homes. And if we look back over the past several weeks, the majority of our cases, uh, as far as deaths are concerned, have been occurring in uh, nursing home environments. And 
for that reason as such a high impact area where we can do a lot of good at preventing transmission, we are implementing our um, aggressive two-week strategy to test every single nursing home in the state of Mississippi, both employee and um, resident within the next couple of weeks. So just stay tuned on that. We're, we're already getting that launched and activated. Um, uh, a couple things uh, just to mention also, um, as far as uh, hospital capacity, we seem to have relative stability in the number of uh, hospital beds utilized for people with COVID. Um, ICU and ventilator utilization has been relatively stable, although we did see um, a, a modest bump um, in the number of, of ICU patients um, over the past uh, several days. This is something that you know we've been watching closely because coronavirus is still out there and people are getting sick. And if we think about people getting sick in the nursing home environment, they're gonna be more likely to get severe disease and then you know require more intensive uh, management. One other exciting an announcement is that we are uh, distributing the uh, new antiviral medication remdesivir to hospitals across the state of Mississippi. Thus far, 14 hospitals in Mississippi have received a shipment of remdesivir. At this time, any hospital that is taking care of patients who've been critically ill with coronavirus are eligible to receive this medication to distribute to their, to their patients in the hospital. Um, this is not a miracle drug, but it, it does offer a potential opportunity for um, you know, ad additional support for people who are hospitalized uh, with coronavirus. The only other thing I would like to mention is that additional data is coming out on the survivorship rate of people hospitalized with coronavirus and a new study um, from Boston that's under review. You know, it looks like that the mortality rate is gonna be less than 20%. So with good care, with the proper team that is adequately resourced, it's very survivable. It can be difficult um, to go through ventilator course and ICU support, but of people who require that level of support, survivorship is, seems to be more the norm than the exception.